Good day. My name is Jürgen Steinmetz from Livestream in Honolulu, and I'm joining you from Hawaii, but we'll be traveling far away today to the kingdom of Eswatini. Eswatini is a landlocked country in the southern part of Africa, surrounded by the Republic of South Africa and Mozambique, and it has some very special traditions and people. Many of you may not know the word Eswatini. Eswatini, and now when I say the former Swaziland, it may ring a bell where Eswatini is and what Eswatini is about. So today uh, we have three important people on this uh, podcast. Um, one is the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Tuli Gladla. We have the Minister of Tourism, Moses Vilakati, who will actually tell us why it's now Eswatini and no longer Swaziland. And we probably have the most dedicated head of a tourism board, the CEO of the Eswatini Tourism Board, Miss Linda Nuxmalo, sharing her passion about her country, about festivals, about the kingdom. And it's just going to be fascinating to learn more about Eswatini and also when you can travel there again and how the situation is with the COVID threat and how Eswatini intend to welcome tourism back. Enjoy. So, good morning, everyone. Aloha from Hawaii. This is Jürgen Steinmetz from Livestream. Uh, today, I, we have a really, really high-level audience from a country many of you have, may have never heard about. And it's not only because this country is unknown, specifically here in our part in the United States that much, but it has changed its name. And when I say Swaziland, you probably know what it is, but it's not called Eswatini. We can get into this later, why this is and so forth. But uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome um, our good friend, the Honorable Minister Moses Viakati. He is the Minister of Tourism uh, for the Kingdom of Eswatini. And also equally important, uh, we have the Honorable Minister Tuli Gladla, and I'm so sorry if I pronounced this wrong. She's the Minister of Foreign Affairs, so I'm really impressed. We have a high level audience. And then our, our good friends, the head of the Eswatini Tourism Board, she is also a mover and shaker in the industry. Her name is Linda, and uh, she's joining us also from Eswatini. I understand from a message earlier, there's a storm in Eswatini, so we hope we all get together, and I hope the storm is harmless. Uh, we don't need any more storms on top of um, all the other problems we have in the world. But welcome, Minister uh, Vidakati. Uh, I'm really glad you're joining us. Tell us more, Eswatini. Where is Eswatini, and uh, how did you get the name change from, Eswatini, from uh, Swaziland to the Kingdom of Eswatini? Um, thank you very much, Johan, and um, greetings to the uh, great people of Hawaii from the Kingdom of Eswatini. Um, as I have pointed out, I'm being joined by uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Tuli Gladla, and Linda Ngumalo. I might be joined in by uh, Hermon Mozart, Director of Tourism, uh, if uh, his phone is on, because we had a bit of storm. Yes, Eswatini is um, uh, a country of about 17,000 square kilometers, um, uh, south, uh, um, which is sandwiched by uh, uh, South Africa to the north, west, and south. And to the east uh, is bordered by Mozambique. So that's where the country is. Um, it's, a, it's a kingdom. Um, it has been a kingdom for the past 400 years. Uh, and the, the issue of changes um, ever since Eswatini was born, uh, it was called Eswatini. But uh, when the, the British came in, they had a problem with the pronunciation. 
<laughs> and they then coined it uh, Swaziland. You will recall, Johan, that um, the three British protectorates, uh, Sw uh, Swaziland, Botswana, and Lesotho, even Botswana was Botswana land, Lesotho was Basotho land, uh, uh, Swaziland was Swaziland. So all of them, because of the um, his historical, since the British could not actually pronounce some of uh, uh, the way in which we pronounce our countries. So it has all along been a Swatin. Then when we became of age at 50 years old, during the 50th independence, we realized that, no, look, let's go back to where we belong. So there was no change in name. We just got back our name which had been existence in existence for the past 400 years. Interesting story, fantastic story. And, and I don't know if you know here in Hawaii, we also used to be a kingdom. And um, and Hawaii- Oh, is that so? Uh, yes, and it was overturned by the uh, United States. And then uh, we still have a queen, we still have a, um, we still have a royal family, uh, only symbolically, and we're the only US state with a royal palace actually. Um, even though the palace is a museum, more or less, it's not actively used as a palace, but uh, the Hawaiian, native Hawaiian population here, what is about 15% of our population, very much um, admires the royal family and the kingdom. And there actually are movements to separate from the United States. Some of them, uh, they wanted to have the kingdom back. So that has been an ongoing discussion for the last hundred some years. But you, uh, Hawaii is now a U.S. state since 1950. Eight, I believe, and um, a state like any others, but we are like two and a half thousand miles in the middle of the ocean between the United States mainland, California, um, Samoa, and and uh, Japan. Uh, but of course, uh, this is um, only <laughs> a comparison. So people here in Hawaii love the kingdom, <laughs> and um, and it's it's fascinating. But going back to Eswatini, our listeners, of course, are all over the world. And, and these are many people are also in the travel business. I think everyone loves to travel, what we cannot do. Uh, what's the situation, maybe we can hear from you or the foreign minister in regards to actually visiting es the kingdom of Eswatini at this time? No, th thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is now on board. She will pitch in, but... Um, as you are aware, we're all facing the, the, the COVID pandemic uh, since March, and travel was uh, very, very difficult, as uh, we had been discussing during our African Tourism Board meeting. Uh, but as of the 1st of October, um, uh, since we're landlocked, South Africa has opened it, uh, the borders. Um, we're only allowing people on essential services to actually go to South Africa or outside of, of the country. But uh, our airport was also very busy, thanks to uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, because we were able to repatriate a number of people to their various uh, places of abode. In fact, even uh, the Americans who are stationed in the in the Southern Africa, they, were, they used our airport to actually uh, go back to the United States of America. And uh, also other uh, countries that needed connections, they were actually using our airport, uh, the King Muswati the uh, State International Airport. And, um, but when it came to the leisure travel, that was the one that was uh, being constrained. Uh, but now that uh, the borders have been opened, this will now also uh, become a, a, they, will, they will now be allowed to travel to, to various places. But as per the WHO um, protocols, people are expected to have a 72 uh, hours a negative certificate uh, uh, from COVID. So that, that really is the major prerequisite. And when they come to the ports uh, of entry, they will be screened for COVID. And uh, if they do not have this certificate, they will be expected uh, to make sure that uh, they are tested. There will be PCR 
being done at the, the points of entry. And uh, if they are positive, they will then be isolated. But again, uh, we definitely are follow, following all the, the WHO uh, protocols as, as, uh, as, as, as per as uh, has been uh, given to almost all of the countries uh, in Africa and even in Europe. So we are now warmly welcoming people to actually visit uh, our beautiful country, our beautiful Eswatini. We will explain why you need to be in Eswatini. I will allow uh, our foreign affairs minister to, to add uh, where I have missed some parts of the, the, the question. Thank you, thank you, Johan. Thank you very much, and uh, welcome, uh, Honorable. Um, and I'm so sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. You, you are fantastic. <laughs> truly, you are fantastic. <laughs> actually, actually, I'm so uh, shocked the way you pronounce my name. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to complain at all because it is well planned. Uh, basically, a good evening. And uh, oh, it's a good morning that side. I will not be able to show off my beautiful face because I'm indisposed. <laughs> and uh, I'm a little bit fatigued. So you'll pardon me because mm -hmm. after my few remarks, I will switch off and. Uh, listen to the doctor's advice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> basically, the kingdom of Eswatini is one country that boasts of beauty. And uh, it boasts of uh, very, very warm people. We are warm, we are welcoming, we accommodate all kinds of people from all over the world. And we're very happy that you have given us this platform to express our identity. And we are hopeful that one day you will come and visit this kingdom and you will be warmly received. A lot has been said about this country, which uh, actually borders around misconceptions, and uh, misforgivings, but to tell you the honest truth, this is one beautiful country that if you were to come here and just be with us for a week or so, you would never want to leave this country. It is, uh, it, it has combined both traditions and modernity. So as much as you'll enjoy your stay, you will experience another experience that is a very, very traditional experience, which is coupled with modernity. Uh, we, we wouldn't like to live or to divorce ourselves from our identity. We love who we are and we are proud of who we are. And we like showcasing our identity to the world. And we have always said, please, the world must not judge us, but, but the world must accept us for who we are. And that is why we're still a kingdom. This is one thing that we enjoy and wouldn't like to sell it for any other kind of uh, democracy. Our democracy is so indigenous and we would like people to listen to us and understand who we are and stop judging us. Because once you understand who we are, you will appreciate and say, oh, we have a different kind of democracy in the world and this has to be accommodated. We, 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 we love who we are and we love people. We like the world to come and experience this unique kingdom. I thank you so much. No, thank uh, you. As I said earlier on, I'm not feeling well, I'm indisposed, but uh, I've enjoyed this minute with you. Thank you, Honorable really Minister. Do. I really appreciate you joining us. And this was a fascinating insight into the country and the love you have for your country. And it looks like the love the people of uh, Eswatini have for their kingdom. And thank you so much for joining us. And I understand if you have to uh, leave and, um, and, 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 and go to the rest of your evening, but I really appreciate you. You're part of us in this or is 
definitely an, a, a very, very interesting insight. What triggered the call altogether uh, was a, a video Linda sent on a WhatsApp group for the African Tourism Board I happen to be part of um, in regards to festivals. And I remember we at eTurbo News also had reported about festivals many different festivals over the last two years in Eswatini. It looks like, um, I always thought Bhutan is the country of festivals, but maybe the kingdom of Eswatini is beating Bhutan also. What, what, what was the festival you recently had? Um, people seem to be really, really enjoying um, the festivities. And I think it was in regards to World Tourism Day actually. I will ask the Honorable Minister and Linda uh, to tell the story. Okay, it's thank a very you. interesting for our events. The Redance, the Inkwala, and uh, the Makanu Festival. We've got so many festivals where we come together, enjoy being together, dance together, sing together, laugh together. They, they will tell you more about it. Thank you, so, thank much. you so much. Thank Th you. Uh, foreign Affairs, thank you very much. She, she, she is a, a hard nut to crack. <laughs> and uh, even if she's in bed, she will say, I want to go the extra mile. Uh, we, we, we always like uh, her passion. Yeah, yes, uh, you and we do have a number of festivals, but a number of festivals. But uh, what we're showing there was during the um, uh, Tourism Day. Uh, as we are aware, but I will give Linda the opportunity to actually touch on that one. But maybe before she says that, she, she says something on the, um, the festivals. I think one aspect that we have to realize about our uh, Swatin is that um, we are a cultural hub. We take ourselves as a cultural hub of the Southern African region. Therefore, we, we pride ourselves that you get the authentic and live interaction, interactions with Eswatini almost right throughout the, 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 the year, from bushfire to reed dance to inkwala, et cetera. And, and that is, so what you are seeing there was just a fraction of what you would get if we were to visit Eswatini. But let me give this opportunity to Linda to actually tell us about uh, that nice video that she, she showed to the to the world. I was amazed also. But yeah, there you are, Linda. Uh, the floor is yours. Good morning, thank Linda. <laughs> morning, Alho. How are you? <laughs> fine, thank you. I'm thank fine. You. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, yesterday, we were commemorating the World Tourism Day 20, uh, 2020 with the theme that says uh, tourism and rural development. And our focus yesterday was really to showcase Eswatini for what it truly is, not only from a culture point of view, but also just from a landscape, scenery, and product point of view. So we decided to choose a rural product um, that, that is uh, at Wendy's Lodge, which is really a product that was initiated by a, a person from the rural communities using our traditional structures. And right now, the key thing for us yesterday was that this property owner has employed people, he is supporting the community, and we are seeing real tourism development within that space. So yes, yesterday was all about that. Going now into the cultural experience that we had yesterday, it was a, a, a mix of contemporary and traditional uh, uh, culture. And it was really a beautiful cocktail of, of, of what we can offer as Eswatini. It was a modernized version of the real authentic culture that the minister is talking about. And you will recall that um, most people right now during COVID, there is the Jerusalem challenge that has happened and it has actually hit the whole of the, of the world actually with a storm. So ye yesterday we were using the Jerusalem challenge to, use, to, to, to actually showcase our culture using that. And um, we didn't try to use the Jerusalem challenge, challenge as, as it is, but we just used our dance move. So we used our culture to showcase, uh, uh, to also, we used the, um, 
the, 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 the song itself to showcase our culture. And that is really what it was. And it actually came out very beautifully. And it was a colorful showcase of our, our culture. What you saw yesterday was that there were four, actually three, three sets of formations. The one was the women who, who dance in a certain way. And then it was the girls. And, and the girls actually will showcase their youthfulness. Our culture is a culture of, of pride. We pride ourselves in someone that will preserve their youthfulness. And we encourage virgin, virgin, uh, um, uh, abstinence and virginity uh, for, for our girls. So, so the girls are actually proud to, to, to display themselves as young girls. And then going into the rest of everything, the men are coming up as, as warriors. You'll see that they were carrying shields to also showcase the culture. So yes, that is just what was happening yesterday. Now going into the other um, festivities that we have within the country, uh, I'll just do it from a calendar marketing point of view. In, in February, we have the Marula Festival, which really marks the celebration and the beginning of a new year. And, the, and, and, and we're celebrating the first fruit of the year because uh, uh, February is a time of festivities in Eswatini. And it's a time where we harvest our fields and we really enjoy our, our, our traditional food. Uh, and in Siswati, it is called Bimbitvane, which is February, and it means it's a, it's, a, it's a month of festivities. So February is what that is. So we normally have that celebration where we, we, the women actually pick up all the fruits and, and they bring that to their majesties as a sign of respect. And also when they come together, they do not only um, get to, 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 to recognize their majesties, but they also get a, a, to, to have an opportunity to network and be together as women and learn from each other. And, and most of what is being taught there is what we need to teach our children as they grow up, entrepreneurship and leadership and a host of a lot of other issues that are relevant to a woman in Eswatini. Mainly it becomes sort of a woman empowerment workshop that happens there. And it is attended by women from all the chiefdoms. And lately, because it is something that is really spectacular, uh, and I'll be sharing some of the videos with you, Alhoa, and please do use them as a backdrop to our conversation today. So yes, um, we, we, we have the women coming in and showcasing that dance moves as well. And they, they really take care of themselves. They learn how to, to, to look beautiful uh, using Marula products. And they, 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 they also discuss issues of commercializing all these um, handcrafts that they bring to, 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 to their majesties and the fruits and everything. So, so they look at other entrepreneurial issues, business issues that, that they have to deal with um, as women. And then they also address issues of raising children, managing the household, and also being strong in the political uh, sphere and really every sphere of your, of your life. Also health-wise, we also discuss issues of health as women during that Marula um, fe festivity. And then that is culminated on, on Friday, we come, we, we deliver the fruits and then we network at night. And during in the morning, we also do a bit of networking and the some sessions that happen there from the Minister of Health and all other sectors of government that actually support us as women. And then on, sa on Saturday in the afternoon is the main day where we showcase our dance moves. We dance all day there. And it's a spectacular event and it is a must see for everyone. So I'll, I'll send you the videos. You'll see how beautiful and spectacular it is. It is just something out of this world. And then after that, uh, in the evening, we dance all night now there. We dance all night again in front of their majesties. And, and when we dance with, with her majesty, is there his majesty is there and this whole festivity was actually born out of her majesty's love for the for, for the women in Eswatini so from a leadership point of view her majesty is really demonstrating leadership to say women you must rise and you must work and our slogan there is pays women which means every woman must not sit on their laurels but they must rise to the occasion and they must add value to the economy and they must add value to their well-being and also to their families as well. Um, wow. Yeah, uh, 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 and Johan, then the next once once she starts talking, that that's what she can spend one hour. 
uh, and you can tell she becomes very passionate. Uh, no, but I wanted to, to give highlights on the festivities. <laughs> I can tell she is, she is now passionate. Um, I think now, if you can explain briefly about the Reed Dance, um, and then um, uh, because there are a number of these festivities, and uh, so that uh, I can then add on the other things that somebody would see when, when he or she comes to a SWATI. Okay, I'll keep it short now. Thank you, Honorable Minister. <laughs> and, then, and then now going into the Reed Dance, the Reed Dance is, 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 is actually the highlight of, 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 of our culture from a tourism point of view. And also it's a highlight because the Reed Dance actually captures everyone in the family. Everyone goes to attend the Reed Dance because the girl child in Eswatini is special like that. And everyone, in, the father of the family, the brothers and the sisters actually go and they watch the girls as they dance during the Reed Dance. And that again is like a five day um, it, it's a five day thing that happens and it, there are things that happen on the first day, second day, going all the way uh, to, the, to the final day. And the climax of it is that the girls will also come in their numbers and, and deliver the read. They cut the reeds, they deliver the reeds to their majesties and, and then they dance before their majesties to not only showcase their youthfulness, but they, 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 they also showcase their, their brightness and their the, the, the colors within the regalia of the of the ladies actually show that we um, girls are, 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 are like flowers. They are budding and they are beautiful. So as a Maswati, we love our girls. We want to preserve them and we want to make sure that they are always as beautiful as flowers. And the name of the regiment for the ladies for the for the girls is Imbali, which means a flower. And it, it, it really shows that they are alive with possibilities and the brightness of that really shows that positive thing happening there. And that happens around August, which is aligned to spring. So that is why it, we, we call them Imbali, which is the flower during spring, springtime. And, and it, it really centers around everything that happens around spring. And then the last one is the Ingwala ceremony, which happens starting in November, going right into, into December. Uh, um, that one is really to mark the end of the year. And that is when the, the, the whole nation comes together and they say, we are marking the end of the year. We are thanking God for the entire year that we, we have been productive and, and, and the year has gone well. But on the Ingola, can I ask the Honorable Minister to, to talk about that because he is, he, it is regiment. I do not want to steal his thunder on that one. <laughs> well, that is, that is fantastic. You have so much passion and this is so wonderful to hear. And it really makes you want to get out of this island here for me. I want to come over to Eswatini and experience some of this. Hopefully this world is opening up soon. Thank you so much, Minister. Thank yes. you. No, thank you, Johan. Um, I think uh, she has narrated most of these festive, uh, uh, our cultural events, the, you know, we have the girls, which is the red dance. And then we have got the, um, the women, which is mainly the Marura. Then we have the men, which is really the Ingwala. But the Ingwala is mainly the men, but also the women of the country, because that's where uh, we taste the first fruit of the year. It's at the end of the year, we are praying to Almighty God that at least he was able to keep us uh, afloat. Now, there are other things that I wanted to share with you, Johan, and then the public, that um, Eswatini, some people are not aware that Eswatini has the, the world's largest granite rock. You know, we, we, we always talk about um, uh, the, uh, the one in, in Australia, as we are aware, but Eswatini has got the largest one, the granite one, is in Eswatini. And um, that for us is a pride. Um, it's not well marketed, but I think right now we want to make sure that people can come and actually enjoy it. It's called Sibebe. You can even check it, S-I-B-E-B-E. -B -E -B -E. But also we, we have one of the biggest festival, uh, festivals in May, which is the Bushfire Festival, which has attracted the whole world. It brings in a number of uh, artists uh, right throughout Africa, as well as the world, to, co to come and uh, meet in Eswatini. And, and we are now even coming up with other festivals 
uh, which are uh, more or less which are similar uh, to uh, the bushfire uh, festival. And also, if you come to a Swati, you are assured of seeing the big five within two days. Actually, within a day, you should be able to see the big five. Which other country, Johan, have you visited where you can see the big five within a day? Now it's none other than Eswatini. Wow. That, it's, it's, it's a fascinating uh, place you live. So for uh, just for the uh, uh, regular when tourism hopefully comes back, it looks like Eswatini could be an ideal situation really to restart the travel and tourism industry because all of these things um, it's not really a city tourism you really experience the country and the rural area in Eswatini what would allow you you know all these things that WHO is recommending like social distancing um, and so forth isn't that the case it, it, indeed uh, um, that is why we went for the um, the, the, the safety stamp, because it was important for us to make sure that the country follows the WHO protocols and guidelines. Uh, but the person who can explain better is Linda, because she was at the forefront, as you know her, she is a go-getter uh, and how we achieved it and what, what we've already done to the facilities, the hotels, the restaurant, et cetera, to make sure that whosoever comes from out of the country will be assured that the protocols are followed to the latter. Linda, the floor is yours. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Um, indeed, um, Alhoa, what we did is that uh, we follow, we, we developed guidelines uh, during COVID. We, we came together with, with, with the industry players um, and we developed guidelines in readiness for the opening of the market. What we felt was quite important is to regain the market confidence as we come out of COVID. We felt that people are going to be quite weary of, of safety as they traverse um, the country in Eswatini and also as, in terms of their travel requirements safety will be a priority. So what we decided was that we wanted to develop the guidelines. The guidelines were really uh, uh, centered around the protocols that we got from the UNWTO in terms of the standards that we need to put in place. So we developed those guidelines and then we launched the guidelines and then we rolled out the guidelines to all the establishments in Eswatini. And the process is ongoing because you will realize that some of the property owners are still not open. Of course, most of them have already opened now and they all have to adhere to these guidelines that we have put in place. What is critical for us is that we, we, we are emphasizing on the three key issues that WHO is emphasizing. We, we, we emphasize social distancing, masking up, and sanitizing in all our establishments, not only within the tourism sector, but also in the business side of things within Eswatini, because we know that um, our tourists will not only be confined to the tourism sector, but also as they go to the retail outlets, as they do their, their normal businesses, they need to be safe in Eswatini. So we are quite proud to say that um, Eswatini is, is really, they've done everything, we've done everything to put in place safety measures for our tourists coming into Eswatini. And we received the safe travel stamp from WTTC and we, we are thankful and proud of that as a destination. Thank you very much, Linda. And as you know, um, uh, this event, uh, of course, is supported by rebuilding.travel and thanks you also a part of it. Um, and we'd like to be part of it just, uh, as, uh, we also have a safer, tourism seal, we invite you to, um, to add. Uh, we are working with WTTC. We actually accepting the WTTC standards, so you're automatically approved. And uh, we're hoping that Eswatini also comes on board. The difference between our stamp and the WTTC, we don't call it safe, we call it safer because we believe that uh, safe, in some cases may result in a legal liability and cannot always be uh, said, but we're not criticizing this. I think the WTTC standards are excellent. The ex, I mean, anyone following these standards is doing everything they can do uh, to stay mm -hmm. safe. And Eswatini is doing this and uh, our safer tourism stamp is based on the self-assessment, uh, what we highly um, recognize WTTC, TÜV, 
and, and some others are bringing to, to the table. And it, it's very good. Esfatini is a world player in tourism. I know you're a member of the African Tourism Board. Um, mm -hmm. You're sitting on every, on every table in the world. So people are looking at you as leaders. And uh, obviously at rebuilding.travel, we would like you to be part of this initiative as well. We're um, really grateful for your time and giving this insight on, on Esfatini. It, it was fascinating. And, and I think we should do this again uh, very soon uh, because I think uh, people are really hungry to understand different cultures, different, uh, uh, different natures, and people are getting ready to travel and they want to go someplace what is uh, unique, what is different. And Esfatini, I think, could, could serve as a shining star uh, or shining example in, in, in the world. Um, Honorable Minister, is there anything else uh, you, you'd like to add or our, our readers and our listeners to know about Esfatini, your upcoming plans, and um, anything else you can think of? No, thank you very much, uh, Johan. Uh, indeed, it was uh, very uh, interesting to chat with you, but also to be part of ATP. Um, as a country, as a SWAT team, we have learned a lot from it. We have exchanged ideas and we are really grateful for such um, a, a wonderful idea where we are sharing ideas with the whole world. In fact, for us, even this opening of borders, uh, we, as you are aware, we've been discussing this for quite a while now. And uh, uh, it, it just became automatic that we had to follow certain guidelines to make sure that all the protocols are actually adhered to. Um, one of the things that I would really love to add is that um, it's, um, it's critical that uh, post-COVID, if there will be post-COVID, we, we support tourism fully. It was the, the first to be affected and also the last to, to resurrect, if you will. But because it's a resilient industry, I have got full confidence that all countries in the world are going uh, to, to sustain the tourism industry. As, as, as Swatini, we're trying everything possible to make sure that we can quickly change the narrative. Because in a certain tourism accounts to close to 7% of, of the GDP. And the number of employees were actually out of, out of jobs and were unemployed. And some are probably going to be, I mean, are being retrenched. And that is a worrisome situation. So as a country, what we have now done is we've come up with what we call an economic recovery strategy post COVID. And tourism is, is, is one of those pillars which we have felt should be at the forefront because if you have tourism, the value chains that are involved in there ensures that the country can recover and then it can be on its feet again because COVID-19 is now a new normal. And we now need to say, how do we survive under this new normal? As, as a first take on that one, the domestic tourism became very, very important. And it's, it's interesting, Johan, that people who, who were not traveling within the country are bringing us such amazing stories about what they've seen in the country. And uh, as part of the World Tourism Day, we were able to honor some of these because they brought in uh, things that we didn't even know, we didn't realize about the country. And we've become stronger and stronger such that we can become better ambassadors for people who come to Eswatini. We are saying Eswatini is open for tourism and you'll be warmly welcomed. Uh, we pride ourselves in, in uh, ensuring that we go the extra mile when somebody comes to this country. I think that for me is very, very critical. If we can all, all fall, uh, uh, follow the, the, the protocols and ensure that we reduce this uh, pandemic, the whole world would then survive and, and become better than it was it was before. No, thank you, thank you very much, Honourable Minister, and, and thank you, Linda, for your uh, for your input, and of course also uh, the Foreign Minister who um, uh, left us just a little while ago. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you being a guest on live stream 
our travel this morning and uh, we hope we can see you again. And I surely hope we can travel to Eswatini very soon. And I think a lot of our readers would probably agree with me on this. Uh, uh, you have a nice evening. Um, enjoy your supper and enjoy your festivals and hopefully we can see you again very soon. Aloha from Hawaii, from this part of the world. I don't know how you say good night or good evening in, in your local language. You say, Okay, I would not try to repeat that. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed your little trip to Eswatini, to the kingdom of Eswatini. My name is Jürgen Steinmetz from Livestream here in Honolulu, Hawaii. You can find more podcasts online at livestream.travel. And of course, if you're in the tourism industry and you want to join us in our conversation on how to rejoin travel and tourism, join us at rebuilding.travel. Rebuilding.travel, otherwise livestream.travel travel will give you a lot more podcasts and videos enjoy and we talk to you next time aloha